Every day on There's No Taste Like Home, Chef Gino De Campo will take three family cooks and the recipes that have been passed down through their families from generation to generation, out of the home and into a professional kitchen. OK, come on, come on. Together, they'll serve up their treasured dishes to paying customers and the winning dish, judged by Gino, will be added to the restaurant's menu for a month. A happy cook makes beautiful dinners. To prove that there is no taste like home. On today's show, a deliciously cheesy hot pot from Ireland with aromas that summon up memories of the past. This is my Nanny Kathleen's dish. I can remember. It's like the kind of the smells in the and watching a chop. And I cook it now for my family, which is great. A chicken curry that was originally cooked for Indian royalty in the Punjab. My grandma learnt this recipe from a cook who used to work in the Maharaja's palace. So, so a recipe fit for a king? Yes. Oh and a fabulous stew that kept one family going when times were tough. When she was younger, there was no money. They couldn't afford the fillet and the loin and all the nice bits like we can. So, yeah, they, they used everything. Hello, I'm Gino da Campo, and today I'm greeny like a cat. Why? because I'm in Cheshire. Historically, this county has always been famous for its agriculture and quality produce that had been grown and reared across the plain. From its sword framework cheese to delicious ice cream, the people of Cheshire, they got much to be proud of. I'm in the village of Hale, just south of Manchester. Today, I found the three locals all with home-cooked dishes to make their mama proud. I brought them to this wonderful restaurant where they're gonna cook their dish for paying customers. But only one of them will have the pleasure to have their dish on this restaurant menu for one month. So let the battle commence and let's prove once again that there's no taste like home. Let's meet today's cooks. Sandra Few is making a three Cheshire cheese hot pot accompanied by a rocket and watercress salad. Parveen Ahmed is cooking her grandmother Sardara's Chusa Palak, a chicken and spinach curry served with pilau rice. And Sasha Beaumont is cooking Grandma Alice's boozy braised oxtail served with mashed potato and red cabbage. So girls, welcome to a professional kitchen. How are you feeling? Oh, <laughs> In about four to five hours, it's gonna be mayhem in here, okay? Paying customer, I'm gonna come in, we're gonna have to serve them, they're gonna come fast and furious. But I'm not going to panic you now, because everything is going to be beautiful. You go to do your preparation, and I'll see you in a bit. Yeah. Brilliant. OK? okay. Thanks, Chef. Thank ciao, you. ciao. <laughs> go, go. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Let's meet our first cook at home. Sandra Few is a 41-year-old senior project manager for the NHS. She lives in Willington with her husband, Stephen, daughters, Isabella and Megan, and father-in-law, John. She's cooking a true family favourite, three Cheshire cheese hot pot. Originally from Ireland, this dish spans three generations of Sandra's family. Here's how I make my Nanny Kathleen's three Cheshire cheese hot pot. It's been in my family for about 50 years. My Nanny Kathleen, who used to own a guest house in London, used to make this for her, for her guests. My father used to cook it for me, and now I cook it for my family. First thing I do is grate all of my three cheeses. I'm using Federia cheese, Applebee's and Bourne's and they're all from, from Cheshire. I am a real cheeseaholic. Um, a choice between chocolate and cheese, it's got to be cheese. I put this onto separate plates because when I'm layering, layering the hot pot, I want to make sure that each layer has a bit of every cheese. Once all the cheese is grated, I then get on and prepare my vegetables. I start by peeling and slicing three large white onions. Uh, onions are there, make my eyes cry. Next, I slice 10 tomatoes. I then take four large floury potatoes and peel and slice them. I first tasted the dish at Nanny Kathleen's guest house and 
and then my dad used to cook it with me. But I don't have anything. I don't have anything written down. Everything really is done, or has done in the past, by eye. So, layer of potato at the bottom, followed by a layer of tomatoes, followed by a layer of onions. Next, I add a layer of the cheeses, and I mix all three together. I do the same layering again and again until the pot is over full. I then take semi-skimmed organic milk, free-range eggs, add cracked black pepper and mix it all together in a bowl. I then pour the mixture over all the layered ingredients. So I'm just going to pop the lid on now and put that in the oven for approximately three hours. I live in Willington, Cheshire. I'm from Cheshire. All the cheeses that I'm using are from Cheshire and I would be grinning like a Cheshire cat if I would. Right, now it's time to serve up. That's Sandra's fantastic three Cheshire cheese hot pot, served with watercress and rocket salad, a dish with a rich and varied heritage. So, Sandra, are you okay? Hi. A bit stressed. A bit stressed already? Bit stressed. Come on, we've got plenty of time. We've got plenty of time. Now, tell me, I want to know everything about this dish. This is my Nanny Kathleen's dish. She had a guest house in London for foreign students. She used to cook cheese hot pot. I can remember, it's like the kind of the smells and the and watching her chop and cook. So I must have been six, seven. And then she showed the recipe to your mum and dad? To my dad, Kevin, and he was a chef at sea. He remembers cooking it when he was about 21. So that's a good 50-something years ago. I used to cook this, this dish with my dad when maybe eight, 10. I was a bit nosy in the kitchen. I would never kind of leave the kitchen. I'd always want to see what he's doing. And, and I cook it now for my family, which is great. So your father, Kevin, he's been a big influence for you as far as cooking is concerned? Definitely. Um, you know, my dad can really turn his hand to any dish. Um, my mum, not, not so good. Not so, OK. Not so good. He, um, they live in Spain now, so I don't get to see him very often, a couple of times a year. What would it mean to you if you win today stay on a restaurant menu for a month. What would it mean to Sandra and, and, and to your dad? I think because my mum and dad aren't here, uh, they're obviously in Spain, and my nana Kathleen can't be with us, um, they'd be really, really proud. To win this would just be the most amazing thing. And this is something for, for me um, that I've done for my family. Um, it's but maybe pay back to my to my mum and dad on how well they brought me up. On how well they brought you up. And, and they've done a fantastic job, I can tell you Thank that. You. you know, for you to be here is is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Sandra sets to work grating the mountain of Cheshire cheese she will need to make her hot pot cheesy enough for the paying diners. Most of my dish is in the prep work. I've got a huge amount of prep work to do, and I know I've got limited time to do it, so I've really got to get on, otherwise my dish is not going to be ready in time for service. I've still got two fabulous cooks with dishes that will delight you. Stay right where you are. Coming up, a curry so good that one diner flies 5,000 miles to taste it. How are you? All the way from Bangladesh just to be here. Yes! Just for a chicken curry. Now, now, now. And the busy lunch service puts one of our cooks on edge. Our own for what? cheeses. What? Welcome back to Days Not Taste Like Home. Today I'm in Hale, just south of Manchester. And with me I've got three home cooks who are hoping to dazzle today's diners with amazing dishes. And later one of them will have the chance to have their family favorite dish on this restaurant menu for one month. Let's meet our second home cook. Parveen Ahmed is a 42-year-old married housewife from Hale, Greater Manchester. Here with three of her five sons, Samyan, Sufyan and Hashim. Her dish is Grandmother Sardara's Chusa Palek, a chicken and spinach curry served with pilau rice. The recipe was given to Parveen's grandmother Sardara in the 1930s by a Punjabi Maharaja's cook. It has stayed in the family ever since. 
here's how I make my grandmother Sadara's Maharaja chicken curry. Right, I'm going to show you how to cut your onions the Indian way. This dish is very important to me because it brings back memories of back home. It reminds me of my grandma. All my children love eating it. If you see, they've started to go almond brown. In goes the tomatoes. Next go in the spices. The cumin seed, black onion seeds, red chilli powder, curry powder and salt. And then I need to bring over the crushed ginger and the garlic. So that goes in. And there we have the masala. The masala is the base uh, used for any form of fish, chicken or meat. Um, and every family has their own masala. In goes your chicken, a glass of water and five green chilies. In a separate pan, I already have the spinach, the milk and into there I'm going to cut the dill. So when the chicken's ready, you amalgamate the spinach to the chicken. And then nothing goes to waste in an Indian kitchen. I don't think Gino's tasted anything like this at all. In goes the fresh coriander and the garam masala. And then stir it in thoroughly. That's Parveen's grandmother Sadara's Chusa Palak, a mouth-watering curry served with pilau rice. Gino wants to find out more about where it came from. So, Pavin, I'm really looking forward to hear about your dish. Tell me, where did it all start? It all started back home in India. OK. And uh, my grandma, Sadara, used to make this for her children. My grandma learned this recipe from a cook who used to work in the Maharaja's palace. Oh, I see. So, so a recipe fit for a king. Unfortunately, I never met my grandma. I think it's so nice and special that I'm cooking this here today. So how old were you when you started to get involved in this recipe? I was 17 years old when I got married. I didn't know how to cook, so I learned... Nothing at all? Nothing at all. I was still at school when I got married. So I went back to school married woman. Yeah. And my auntie taught me, and I cooked this for the family. I have fond memories of it being like my first curry that I okay. uh, cooked. I've been cooking it now for 25 years. My husband yeah. loves it and my number two son, Hamza, adores it. It's oh. his favourite. That's amazing. 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 Yeah. Thank you for bringing it here into the professional kitchen. Uh, what can I say? It's my pleasure. Ah, uh, thank you. Now, I know that you're using chicken. Yes. OK, so what I wanted to show you here is just a couple of ways mm -hmm. that you can cut chicken. Mm -hmm. So, because you buy the chicken from the butcher, right? Yeah. Already cut it. Yeah. Well, let me show you how you can do this by yourself. Ah, OK. Jointing a chicken at home is a much cheaper alternative to buying it ready prepared. So you get your whole chicken. Mm -hmm. Now, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to take the legs out, OK, the tie. So make sure, of course, you have a very good sharp knife. This is important. So we open the ties like this, mm -hmm. OK? At this point, you will see that there is a natural breaking. Uh, OK, okay yes. here. So what you do, you just cut where, where naturally breaks, you just cut it through. And now what we're going to do, we're going to cut this one in half. Uh -huh. And with this, then we're going to cut into the leg. When you cut into the leg, you need to make sure where the joint is. Mm -hmm. That is where you separate the leg from the tie. Simple as that. So here we have the first two pieces. Amazing. Okay? Yes. Then we're going for the other two pieces. Mm -hmm. Okay? So you can do this by yourself very, very easily. The wing, you always make sure that the end part of the wing is out. Like this, uh -huh. okay? Because you don't really get any no, meat in here, no. okay? Then what you do very simply, you go into the breast. Now, there are various ways to do the breast, mm -hmm. okay? The way I like you to do it, can you see here in the back, yes. all this bone here, I'll just very simply run the knife through mm -hmm. like this, okay? Now, a lot of people, they take the wishbone. I don't like, uh, I don't like to take it out mm -hmm. because I like it that it stays in there, yes. okay? 
So this one you cut it off, so you have the beautiful breast here. Now, what you do with this one, I simply cut this one in a half, okay? Mm -hmm. So run the knife through. And it's very important to have the knife that is beautiful and sharp, because then it cuts easy, yeah. okay? Yeah. So we cut this one in half, and then, very simply, choose one side mm -hmm. of the bone, mm -hmm. okay? And run the knife through like this. Beautiful, look at that. Another one, two, Again, choose one side on the bone. You can feel where the yes, bone is. Yes. Choose one side, mm -hmm. and then put a little bit of pressure with the knife, and the job is done. Amazing. Like this. And there you have it. A beautiful whole chicken yes. cut into eight beautiful pieces. Huh? Amazing. It's the start of preparation for Parveen, so she begins by creating the base for her curry, a mix of onions, garlic, and tomatoes not forgetting the all-important spices. I feel a little bit nervous, but I think nerves are good for you. I just hope to give everybody a nice meal and a little taste of India. All three home cooks are finding their feet, as this is the first time they have ever worked in a professional kitchen. Each one hopes that Gino might select their family dish to take pride of place on this restaurant's menu for a month. Now it's time to reveal our final dish, set to light up our restaurant today. 44-year-old Sasha Beaumont is an artist from Bollington in Cheshire. She lives with her husband, Biff, daughter, Amber, and pets, Oakley, Benson, and Banana. Hers is a dish that packs a punch, Grandma Alice's boozy braised oxtail. However, the original recipe was slightly different to how Sasha cooks it today. I'm now going to make my Granny Alice's oxtail. Get the pan nice and hot first. Now I let that really, really almost burn, so it caramelises and crisps and is very, very brown. I first remember eating this oxtail with my grandma, and she was from Domno in Essex. Right, take the oxtail out. And then I set that aside on a plate for 10 minutes. All this lovely brown smoking goo in the bottom is what we want, because the flavour's all in there, all that. It's like Marmite. Just going to throw the veg in. There's the onions gone in, and the carrots, and the celery. I'm going to season the oxtail with salt and pepper. Now I let them soften for quite a bit, but I want some colour on them. I don't want them just soft and mushy. I want almost a little tinge of, tinge of brown on the veg. I think they're now ready for the flour. Smashing. And I'm then going to add the red wine. Yeah, I, I do use a nice full-bodied red, like a Shiraz or a Cabernet Sauvignon. You need something with lots of guts, I think, because it's a big, gutsy flavoured dish. My grandmother didn't use alcohol as, as it was during the war and post-war. She would just have used her own beef stock. Um, so this is my interpretation. Yes, it's a very boozy dish, like me. I like, I like booze. And I'm going to add a splash of port for sweetness which again is my own sort of little interpretation. But it's smelling good, it's smelling meaty and veggie and good so far. And I want that all to cook out now and cook, cook the flour out and I'm going to add the beef stock. The history of this dish, I remember my granny Alice was a good old Essex bird and I used to remember, I remember eating this as a kid with her and we used to make faces out of the bones when we'd finished sucking the bones. We'd make little elephants and and rhinos and hippos out of the bones. So I'm going to add, put the oxtail back in and I'm going to add everything else. I'm going to put the bay leaves and thyme in now. Now I'm going to pour in the anchovies and the orange peel. Add a little bit of mustard powder. So the sauce is looking just right. I'm going to put a lid on it. Now I'm going to put this in the bottom oven for about four hours. My grandma, she had an alga, and my mum then used to cook it as I was growing up, cook the oxtail on an alga again, and now I'm doing the same thing on an alga, but I suppose we all added our own little bits as it went along. Right, now it's time to serve. Yep, so that's looking beautiful. That's Sasha's Grandma Alice's boozy braised oxtail, served with mashed potato and red cabbage. Time to find out more about this dish's rich heritage. Sasha, now I'm really looking forward to your dish. 
tell me a little bit about the history of this dish. Where does it come from? This comes from my grandma, Alice. Your grandmother? Yeah. was younger, there was no money. They couldn't afford the fillet and the loin and all the nice bits like we can. So, yeah, they, they used everything. Grandma's house was lovely. It was, um, it was full of dogs and pigs and chickens and, and she used to grow all her own vegetables and fruit and herbs and flowers for the, for the house. And I, I remember her always outside in the sun. But there was always something cooking, always. Maybe not this oxtail, but there was always some gorgeous apple pie or something going on. So it, it always smelled lovely then, yeah. Now, is this a dish that you prepare often in your family? Uh, have, you, have you got children? I've got a daughter who's 16. OK. Um, Does your daughter know how to do it? Have you shown her how to do it She doesn't know how to do it, but she likes it, which is unusual, like, yeah. Very for unusual for a 16-year-old yeah. to she's, like she's, oxtail. She's a good girl. Now, what would it mean to you, OK, for this dish to win today, stay on a restaurant menu, so all of a sudden it becomes restaurant quality food for one month. What would it mean to you personally? It would be brilliant. Um, it'd be lovely for my grandma as well, having some legacy, I think. So, Sasha, so I know that you're going to serve red cabbage with your dish, OK? I'm going to give everybody a very simple tip, because usually people, they leave the core into the cabbage when you shred it, OK? But I think sometimes what's happening is a little bit too harsh and a little bit too hard because the leaves are nice and tender and the core is gonna be far too harsh, okay? So let me show you a tip how I do it. What I'll do with a knife, I actually take the core out like this and this is the toughest bit yeah. of the cabbage. You can give this to your chicken if yeah. you want, okay? So you take the core out like that and then the way to shred it is very simple. You put all the leaves together, you roll them like a big fat cigar. <clears throat> and then the only thing you're gonna have to do is to shred it. So at this point, what's gonna happen? All the leaves are exactly the same consistency, okay? And you don't find those ash, crunchy core in the middle. Look at that. Nice and beautiful shredded. And that's the way you do it. Service is creeping ever closer and the pressure is mounting on our three home cooks. In just a few hours, their dishes will be served to paying customers for the first time. Parveen's chicken and spinach curry has been simmering away for a while. She seems to have found a novel way of managing the expectations. Today I'm just uh, going to pretend I'm cooking for my whole family and fingers crossed it will go well. It hasn't been going quite so well for Sasha as she's just narrowly avoided burning her entire batch of red cabbage. Stick it on the bottom, no problem. It's not now. <laughs> well, it's not too stuck, but any more stuck and we would have had a small problem though. But we're all right, we're fine. And Sandra is getting increasingly panic-stricken as her hot pot is going disastrously wrong and may not be ready for service. Oh, it's just... No, it's not cooked and it's stuck to the tin foil. It's just all going wrong. <laughs> Gino is so concerned about her dish that he asks one of the professional chefs to step in and help. Yeah, you'll be fine in 40 minutes, so let's get that to, yeah. to the other oven. So that completes today's lunchtime's menu. But only one of today's cooks will have the chance to have their family recipe on this restaurant menu for one month. Join us after the break to find out if our three home cooks can stand the heat in a professional kitchen. Coming up... Service! Lunchtime service begins and the kitchen plunges into chaos. Ready, well, five, another will be ready. Five, five minutes. Five minutes. Oh, it's all falling off. And one dish in particular runs into trouble. If you serve this to me, I will send it back. Welcome back to There's No Taste Like Home. I'm in Hail in Northwest England. Very soon, this lovely restaurant will be filled with paying customers, all hungry to taste some fantastic home cooking. In the kitchen right now, our three cooks are preparing their beloved family dishes. But we can only have one winner today, so let's remind ourselves 
what's on the menu today. Sandra Few is cooking three Cheshire cheese hot pot. Originally cooked by her nana Kathleen, it was a favourite with the foreign students staying at Nana's guest house. What my nana wanted was, for the little coming over here to learn English, is to then sample what really home cooking was like. Parveen Ahmed is making Grandma Sardara's Choose a Palak, a chicken and spinach curry served with pilau rice, a recipe that has been with her all her life. This dish was always cooked well, at least once a week throughout my childhood. So for me, I've grown up with it. And Sasha Beaumont is making her Grandma Alice's boozy braised oxtail, a dish that as a child meant more to her than just a stew. Yes, it's a very boozy dish, like me. I like it. I like booze. Lunchtime is fast approaching and there's just enough time for the waiting staff to put the final touches to the dining room for today's special service. Back in the kitchen, it's a hive of activity as our three home cooks prepare their dishes for a heritage showcase. So, how are they all coping? I'm in top dither and we're just getting all ready and excited now. A bit apprehensive, but I'm, I've done all I can do now. So, I just hope people like it. I do hope to do everybody proud, and um, I hope I win. Sandra, how are we doing here? Oh, yes. don't don't get scared. Don't get scared. It's only me. At the moment, how things are going? You got everything ready? Yeah, I think I'm pretty much ready. How are you going to feel under pressure when I'm going to start to shout all the dishes coming out, and I want them, and I want them now? Well, I hope you don't make me cry. Why would I want to make you cry? I hope you don't say three, four, six. I say how many? Yeah. Do you want yeah, three? Well, Do you want the, four? Now you're going to realise what it means being in a professional kitchen very soon. So make sure you've got everything ready. Yes. OK? Calm. Yep. Yes, Braids. Yes. OK? Make yes. sure that everything is all right, everything is ready, and then I'll take you through slowly, slowly, step by step, how it's done. OK. Thank you. Pavin, how things are going here? Uh, yes, we're we're fine. It's it's you cooked. Fine? Yes, I'm it's fine. cooked. Yeah. You taste it. Yes, the rice is in its dam, and you only open the rice when you're about to serve. Yeah. Are you going to be ready for lunch, then? We've got probably about 15 minutes. Yeah, I'll be ready. Yeah. You sure? Yes. You're not going to be upset with me if I start to shout to your dish, right? And I'm going to say now. I no. want it now. No, I want no, it no. Now. no. I you want will it now. Not. It will be there. You sure? I promise. Promise. Sasha, where are you? I'm practicing. You're practicing for what? For serving. For the mashed potato? Yeah. I want yeah. to try your mash. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Don't look so Nothing surprised. creamy. It lacks the seasoning, though. Yeah, I like it. things salty, though, and I'm, I'm worried well, that... No, don't, don't make it salty. I worry that I over And listen, you're going to be ready when I'm ready, right? Yes. Promise? Yes. Yeah? <laughs> OK. With a morning full of busy preparation, the time has flown by. It's time for lunch, and the good people of Hale are waiting to try the three historical dishes. The moment of truth has arrived for the cooks, as the restaurant has just opened its doors for business. It's a great menu, and the Hale diners will have a tough choice to make. Our three home cooks will need to impress. You for choice, really. Yeah. Um, I'd really like to try the oxtail. Well, personally, I'm going for the chicken curry, I think. I'm going to give that one a go. Which one are you going for? <laughs> Very simply, we're going to start in about 15 minutes. OK, service is going to go and it's going to be really, really fast. Before we do that, I must see your dish on the plate exactly the same way you're going to serve it to the customer. Yes? Yes, yes sir. Yes, All right, yes. fantastic. Let's go. Everybody in the station and I'm going to come around in 10 minutes. So whilst the cooks plate up their dishes, Gino heads front of house to meet some very special diners, one of whom has travelled here all the way from Bangladesh. You must be Hamza. Hey, How Gino. are you? How are you? All the way from Bangladesh just to be here? Yes. Just for a chicken curry? Yes, of course. Uh, of course. How I'll tell can you I not be here? I'll tell you something, your mum, she's doing a fantastic job. Thank you she's much. by far yes. the coolest one in the kitchen. Yeah? She's a, like a, a proper nice, gentle lady. This is done, that is done. Every time I go there, so, are we ready with it? Yes, Gina, everything is fine. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Da, da, da. <laughs> very, very cool mom. Really? And I heard that the story of the day, she is amazing. Yes. Absolutely amazing. Yes. And you boys, you know, you love this dish so much. Of course! Yeah, this, this, is, this is all appreciation. Look at that, all appreciation. Appreciation! <laughs> 
Now tell me something, have you ever actually ever cooked this dish yourself? I have tried to cook it. But? But I cannot do the dish like my mother. You can, but nobody, fantastic. No, nobody ever can. That's why we say, like mama used to make. Yes. You can see that this one of these dishes that has been in families for for long, long time. It's got a lot of passion, that's what I like. Yeah, that, that is 100% that is true. Gino! Guys, enjoy your meal. Right. Enjoy your meal. So you must be Steven. I am. How are you? Very well, thank you. Pleasure to meet you. How, pleasure to meet you. How proud are you that Sandra managed to come in a professional kitchen downstairs oh. and cook this dish that has been in her family for years? She has been dying to show this off to loads of people and she's, over the years she's cooked it for me maybe, I don't know, six, seven times. But in the last couple of months, once she knew that she was in the possible running for this programme, it's, like, it's almost like it's on the, on the menu every week. How do you think she's going to do today? Well, she does do well in the Russian. Yeah. She's actually very cool. Yeah. You know, when she's in the kitchen, she's very, you know, collected. Yeah, Gina, don't worry about it. I've got everything under control and this and that. Do you think she's going to be good at service? When I'm going to shout to the dishes and they need to be there at a certain time? She may shout back. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worry. She may shout back. So, so your mom comes with a warning. Yeah. She may shout back. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. If I run into trouble, with Sasha, I'm gonna call Leo, and you can come to help me in the kitchen. Okay. How about that? Yeah. Okay, we're nearly ready to serve, so buon appetito, enjoy your meal, okay? By the end of the lunch service, Gino will award one dish the honor of being on this restaurant's menu for a month. His decision will look at three main criteria, cost of ingredients, preparation time in the kitchen, and the reaction of the diners. It's Gino's role to ensure that every dish that leaves the kitchen tastes fantastic and looks perfect. So now each cook must plate up a dish and send it to him. First to be tasted is Parveen's Grandma Sardara's chicken and spinach curry. So, spinach. I'm gonna try this one. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I tell you, the chicken is soaking up all the beautiful flavor. The meat is falling out of the bone really, really nicely. And the rice. Oh. This is absolutely cooked to perfection. <laughs> Well done, well done. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Next, it's Sandra's three Cheshire cheese hot pot, served with rocket and watercress salad. Mmm. Mmm. I like it. Mmm. Let me tell you what I like. Is the layers of potato. Mm -hmm. They're not overcooked, I like that. I like that the cheese actually melting into the potato, so you get the saltiness naturally going there. The onion works really well, because you got the sweetness of the onion, you know, with the potato, crunchiness of the cheese. So all the layers, they really, really work. All right, really work. Mm. And finally, Sasha's grandma Alice's boozy braised oxtail, served with mashed potato and red cabbage. First impression, it looks very pretty on a plate, okay? Now, potato, are they, have you seasoned them? I've seasoned them, boss. Nice. Yeah. Cabbage. What have you done to it? There's all sorts of goodies in there. Mm, well, lovely, nice crunch. Sweetness coming through on the cabbage, Cinnamon, very good. Ground cloves, mixed I can spice, get all this um, spicy coming mm. through. Lovely. Now, the masterpiece. So, do you think it's cooked? I think it could do with a little more, but okay. I'm, happy. I'm happy with the flavour. You're happy with the flavour? A little more. So it melts off the bone, falls off the bone. Do you get the orange? I like it. I get the orange peel come at the yeah. end, and oh, to be the bay orange. leaves. Yeah. yeah, and the mash, well seasoned as well. Well done. <laughs> Beautiful dish. Well done. Thank you, darling. <laughs> Gino is happy with all three dishes and gets the cooks ready for service. Now is the crucial part of the day. Here is where I'm going to see, I'm going to put all the tickets with the orders that they're having. So it's very important that whenever I shout an order, okay, that you answer back. 
I, would, I need you to tell me, yes, chef, or yes, Gino, whatever you want to choose, you must shout back. Do you understand? Yes, yes Gino. Yes. Okay, okay, back to the station. Back to the station and let's start to work. I think I'd like the um, Cheshire cheese hot pot. I'm going for the curry because it sounds like it's really authentic. I've been in the family for years, so I'll have a bash of that one. Yes, I'm going for the Grandma Alice's Boozy Braised Oxtail. I just fancy the cheese hot pot because it sounds interesting. It's something I'd never do myself at home and I've never had anywhere else. Okay, guys, we're ready. Six chicken. Yes. Sorry? Yes, Gino. Okay, and one cheese. Two more cheeses. Five in. Well, I five. know that we'll be ready. Five when? Minutes. How long? Five minutes. Come on, three cheeses, one oxtail. How long, guys? Come on, let's pull it together. One more cheese. Yes, Gino. One more chicken. One yes. more chicken. Yes, Gino. And one oxtail. Yes, Gino. Come on, guys. It's only five minutes into service and already Sandra's panicking. OK, table number two, three cheeses. Me. Hello? Yes, chef. OK, one hot stage. She's so nervous that she can't remember how many of her hot pots he's called for. OK, table number 33, one cheese. Yes, chef. Two chicken. Seven. Yes, chef. Seven. One hot stage. Seven, seven. Yes, seven, 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 okay. seven. Oh my okay, goodness. Okay, table number ten. One more cheese. Seven. Yes, chef. Eight, One more chicken. <laughs> Parveen is also finding the pace of service in a professional kitchen challenging. Parveen, how long for the chicken? Uh, about ten minutes. It can't be ten minutes. You said five minutes oh, ago. Five rice. minutes. Gina, look. It should have gone down, not Gina, up. Gina, look. The rice keep going like this. And Sasha's oxtail isn't faring any better. At this rate, the diners will all be going home hungry. Oh, it's all falling off. Oh, What's wrong with you now? Nothing. Oxtail. Oxtail. I need this one cheese. I need one cheese. It's just orders, orders, and I don't know how many. I just, I've no idea how many I'm doing, but I'm just doing. I think I'm a nine. It's all happening so fast, um, but I just have to keep cool and calm. With the orders piling up, Sandra is desperately trying to focus, but Gino's not making things easy. How long for the cheeses? One minute, chef. How long for One. the cheeses? One minute, chef. One minute. Finally, the cooks manage to plate up some dishes and Gino allows the food to leave the kitchen. Absolutely Fantastic. Beautiful, yeah. Beautifully presented. Yes. Thank you. It looks enormous, but it looks lovely. Well, it looks fabulous. It looks really good. Really good. Oh, I'm really excited to try this because I make quite a mean curry myself. Yeah, it was nice. Interesting. Yeah. The diners may be impressed, but back in the kitchen, it's another story. I'm a little bit worried because we are not fast enough and people are waiting upstairs. So uh, it's still time for shouting. Can I have three cheese? Yes, sir. OK, now. Uh, my hands are shaking. I'm trying to get the rocket to stay on top of the cheese. Uh, four chickens. Yes, yeah, sir. Six chickens. Can I do the four chickens first? Ten chickens. <laughs> no kidding. Don't lie. Did you get it? Yes, sir. Come on, let's pull it together. I asked everybody before the service, are you guys ready? And everybody said to me, Gino, don't worry, everything is all right, everything is under control. We now, we one doesn't find the oxtail, the other one, the rice we is lying. falling apart. We one is the cheeses, don't go on the plates. In the restaurants, the diners who have received their food are enjoying what they're eating. Delicious. Absolutely lovely. It's almost like the curry that my mum makes. So <laughs> very nice. I go on holiday with a friend who does quite a lot of cooking. I think she's going to have to have this recipe. I'm definitely going to have to have this recipe. In the kitchen, things are going from bad to worse as our three home cooks are drowning amongst the orders. But Gino cannot let standards slip. Now, now, now. This Take one? this back yeah. and I want the four. Plus here, I don't see any chicken. Look, look, oh. look, look. If you serve this to me, I will send it back. Yeah, you know why? Because there is no chicken, there is only a puree of spinach. What about if it goes to your son? He comes all oh. the way from uh, uh, Bangladesh to come here <laughs> to have a bowl of spinach. <laughs> all three cooks are doing an incredible job, but service is not over yet. Now, after the break, I have a very tough choice to make. Who's gonna win today's show? I don't know yet, but stay with me. Guys, two cheeses, three chicken, one oxtail. Yes, sir. 
coming up. Today's winner of Taste Not Taste Like Home is... Chef Gino De Campo is on a mission to prove there's no taste like home. This is absolutely cooked to perfection. He's found three home cooks with three historic family recipes. Together, they've taken over a restaurant in Hale, Greater Manchester. It's a full house, and as a result, the orders are coming through thick and fast. Our three home cooks have found it to be a tough challenge. Ten chickens! <laughs> <laughs> Service is nearly over and the cooks are all keen for Gino to pick their dish to feature on this restaurant's menu for a month. We are nearly there. We have got a couple of tables left, so... Bridge, how long for the oxtail? One minute. Sorry, can I ask you something? At the beginning of the day, right, the mashed potato was all beautiful on the plate with a spoon, all <laughs> nice and tidy. Now it's like a lamp on a plate. Stop it. So, no more portions, huh? No, it depends. Gino, I've got seven cheese left. OK, everybody here? Everybody here? It was the last table. Yeah. 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 Anybody like a slice? Yeah. No, I don't drink. <laughs> Service is now over, and our cooks have done all they can to secure their dish a place on the restaurant's menu for a month. It's now up to the diners, the restaurant's head chef and manager to help Gino make his difficult decision. The hot pot immediately reminded me of Sunday lunch when I was a child. It was lovely, that's how it was. It wasn't too hot, which is my worry at times, but it was absolutely lovely, as you can tell. Oxtail, boozy, brilliant, very, very nice. I'll have it again, definitely, no two ways about it. Lovely. Well, they seem to have enjoyed them, but which dish will Gino pick? Will it be Sandra Fuse's three Cheshire cheese hot pot, accompanied by a rocket and watercress salad? A hearty dish first created by Granny Kathleen. To win this would just be the most amazing thing. And this is something for, for me um, that I've done for my family. Or Parvin Ahmed's Grandma Sardara's Choose a Palak, a chicken and spinach curry served with pilau rice, and a dish that was once cooked for a Maharaja. I never thought I'd be making my recipe in a professional kitchen ever. Uh, I feel quite honoured to be doing this. Or will it be Sasha Beaumont and her Grandma Alice's boozy braised oxtail with mashed potato and red cabbage, a dish with its heart in the austere days of wartime rationing, but now enjoying a generous two types of tipple? It would be brilliant. Um, it'd be lovely for my grandma as well, having some legacy, I think. So, guys, did you enjoy your food? Yes! Was it not great? Yes! Now, before I'm going to tell you who is the winner of today's show, OK, I want you to introduce you the three home cooks. Come on, guys, come in! So, do you guys enjoy the experience? Yes, yeah? Yes. Yeah. yeah? Would you do it again? No. Why not? Because <laughs> you were such a bully. <laughs> I'm not a... <laughs> I wasn't a bully, by the way. <laughs> you look cool. When you came here today, you were all beautiful and glamorous this morning. What's, what's happened to you then? You. <laughs> Is it me? You've been genified. <laughs> Today is probably the most difficult one that I've done because I loved all three of them. I couldn't really find a fault in any of the dish. Very tasty. The curry was great. Your cheese, hot pot thingy was unbelievable. Of course, the oxtail. I'm a very big fan of oxtail. But unfortunately, we can only have one winner. One of the dishes which is going to be on this restaurant menu for one month. So today's winner of Days Not Taste Like Home is... The Three Cheese Hot Pots. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Well done. Well done. This is yours. Come in. Come in. <laughs> She was amazing, yeah. Um, uh, I'm really happy for her. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm absolutely, she, she's such a sweetie and she, she deserves to win, I say bravely. <laughs> How good is that of me? Family's really important to me. Um, I, I love my husband, my kids. Um, but my mum and dad, who are not here, and I wish they could have been here today. And um, I think thinking of every time I cook the dish, I think of my mum and dad, and I think of Nanny Kathleen, and, and I'm just just so overwhelmed. Um, and I'm sure my daddy's going to be proud of me. All three dishes have really captured the spirit of today's show. Congratulations to my three home cooks, and of course, congratulations to Sandra and her three cheeses hot pots. Don't forget to join me next time as I continue my journey across the UK, just to prove one more time that that's not taste like home. Well, if you want to try the dish yourself, or perhaps you want the details of the recipes featured on today's show, the only thing you've got to do is go to itv.com forward slash food.